Welcome back guys. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to use TXVK on Windows. It is basically a translation layer that translates Direct3D 9, 10 and 11 calls to Vulkan API. Direct3D is a proprietary graphics API for Microsoft Windows. A lot of people often refer to it as DirectX. This is not exactly true. Direct3D is just a part of DirectX. It makes sense. Now graphics API is basically a software that communicates between the GPU and the game. It draws graphics. I am trying to explain things in simpler terms. Its technical explanation is a bit complex. Google is your friend. Now even the Linux based team OS uses DXVK in order to run old titles that use Direct3D 9, 10 and 11 as team OS does not support Microsoft DirectX. From my own testing I have observed that a lot of old titles benefit from DXVK in terms of performance. I am not surprised by this result. Considering Vulkan is the newer and superior API. In this video, I will be running GTA 4 on Windows 11. It's one of the worst PC ports ever made. First, I will be running it using its default API that is Direct3D 9. After that, I will be running it using DXVK, basically Vulkan. Now, GTA 4 was made for a 32-bit platform. Its maximum RAM usage is limited to 4 GB. By default, this RAM usage is limited to only 2 GB. So I'll be making a few tweaks. I have installed the Steam version of the game. It's now known as the complete edition. So just open the root directory, right click on the game in your Steam library. Go to manage then go to browse local file. Running the game on my Steam Deck. This is its root directory. Just open GTA 4 folder. Open the PC folder. Then open stream file here text writer all of the values here will be set to 2 GB I have already changed them to 4 GB this is the number that you need to enter 409600 for all of the 4 values after making the change click on file then click on save then close the text file that's it go to steam again right click on the game click on properties just enter this launch command i'll give it in the description of this video copy paste this will basically increase the vram usage to 2 gb memory restrictions will be removed so first i'll be running the game using the default api direct 3d9 select gta4 from the main menu and you can see here in the overlay graphics api direct 3d9 and show you the display settings will be targeting 60 fps 800p resolution high to medium start the game vram usage available vram is around 2 gb there's nico i'll just go outside and just observe the fps counter look at that fps drop try to hijack this vehicle we are not getting 60 fps 37 fps ugly frame pacing issue poor performance 33 fps 50 fps fps is all over the place gp usage is not even maxed out this is what i wanted to highlight directx 9 is struggling This is why this game is regarded as one of the worst PC ports ever made. 38 FPS. This area is demanding. 29 FPS, you can see. Not impressed by the performance. Time to switch to DXVK. Now I'll be showing you how to use DXVK. Just go to its GitHub page. I'll give its link in the description of the video. Download the latest version from here. Click on the version under the releases section. At the time of filming, it is version 2.1 latest. Scroll down under the asset section. Click on the first link. In this case, it is DXVK 2.1.tar.gz. I have already downloaded it. Once the download is complete, just open the downloads folder. There is the archive file. 
I have already extracted it. Inside the archive file, this folder is present dxvk-2.1. Open it. Inside this folder, two folders are present x32 and x64. If a game is based on 32-bit platform, open x32 folder. If it is based on a 64-bit platform, open x64 folder. In case of GTA 4, I'll open the x32 folder as it is based on a 32-bit platform. From here, we need to transfer some files to the directory where the game's exe file is present. If a game uses Direct3D9 graphics API, transfer dxgi.dll and d3d9.dll files. If a game uses Direct3D10 graphics API, transfer the last three files. And if a game uses Direct3D11 graphics API, transfer the last two files. In case of GTA 4, I'll be transferring dxgi.dll and d3d9.dll file. Right click, copy, open the game's root directory. Open GTA folder. There's the game's exe file. So I'll be pasting the DLL files here. I've already done that. Overwrite. You can see both files are present here. When you run the game for the first time, it is going to stutter a lot due to the compilation of shader cache. Playing the game for about 30 minutes should be enough for the complete compilation of the cache. Once the shader cache is ready, performance should smoothen out. If you are running the game from Steam, just make sure this setting is unchecked. Go to settings, click on shader pre-caching and uncheck this setting, enable shader pre-caching. DXVK will create its own shader cache. Run the game in the background. Steam Deck tools and RTSS are running. To mitigate the stuttering issue caused due to DXVK shader cache compilation, Valve provides pre compiled shader cache files for games that you download from Steam on Steam Deck. Using the same settings as before, targeting 60 FPS. Alright, guys, the game has started. There's Nico. I'm trying to create a traffic here. And you can see Vulcan. I'll hijack a vehicle. This lady is after me. Finally got the car. 60 FPS. Check out the frame pacing graph. It's a flat line. I played the game for about 30 minutes. Shady cash is almost ready. Complete. Going to Roman's place. Miss the left turn. This area is very demanding. There was a passenger. Skip the cutscene. So the benefits of DXVK can be seen. One of the worst PC ports ever made, running at 60 FPS, stable. Running around the city. Reached my destination. So guys, I'll end the video here. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.